the ones above are not who you think they are. Hey internet, I'm Steve, this is Rafo. Six of the Dusk, a short story about one person on a single island on a minor shard world. But in terms of investiture, it's one of the most intriguing planets in the entire Cosmere. First off, quick rundown about the planet itself. The Dromonad system has a record four planets in the habitable zone, all of which are dominated by oceans, three of which have fully developed human societies on them. However, only First of the Sun can be world hopped to because it's the only one with the perpendicularity. The other three can only be viewed through the cognitive realm, which would actually make them mostly landmass. Hmm. There's only one main continent on First of the Sun, with other large chains of islands popping up from the ocean that covers the majority of the planet's surface. Now this is where it gets interesting. There is no shard in residence on First of the Sun, or at least not during the events of Six of the Dusk. Paji complicates things, being an avatar of autonomy, but effectively, the investiture on First of the Sun is unassociated with any shard, or at least as unassociated as investiture can be, which is technically not at all. Uh, these islands are incredibly dangerous, most notably the Pantheon, which is a collection of about 40 islands near to the mainland, and each of these islands are considered one of the Elican gods, with their own name and personality. The smallest island, Sori, meaning child, is used as a training ground for Elican trappers, who then choose a single island to work for the rest of their lives. Virtually everything, both flora and fauna, has evolved with the ability to utilize, to some extent, the natural latent investiture on the planet. For many, this has granted a sort of realmatic awareness, a sensitivity to the mental signatures, or I suspect, cognitive presence of other living things. The marine deepwalkers, the shadow that Dusk encounters at the beginning of the story, hunt by sensing the minds of prey. As do the massive bird-like night moths, the pack-dwelling tusk run, and even the small rodent-like meekers seem to have some sort of cognitive manipulation ability. One of the only creatures that can hide their cognitive presence are the aviar, a specific type of bird native to the islands of the Pantheon. There are multiple species of aviar, each with a different talent, though we only see two in the story. Cokerly and Miris, who mask the cognitive presence of the humans to whom they're bonded, as well as others in a specific area, given that herds of Krell will sleep under the roosts of Aviar. And Sok, who shows Dusk areas of potential danger through visions of his own corpse. And technically, Sok doesn't count. The stock and trade of these Elican trappers are almost exclusively Aviar, who they breed on Pantheon Islands and then sell to the Elican home isles or to the people on the mainland. That either implies dangerous plant and animal life on other areas of the planet, or these Aviar have other talents that are useful for not just survival. I brought up bonding in my last video, but this is the first time we've really seen it in force, and it's an incredibly important concept in the Cosmere. Bonds between humans and splinters of investiture are seen here on First of the Sun with the Aviar, on Cell with the Seons and possibly the Skaze, potentially on Threnody with at least Silence's grandma, and most popularly on Roshar with the Nahel bonding of Sprint. Even being able to talk to Nightblood requires a bond of some kind. Now, all of these instances are fundamentally similar. Bonds have to do with establishing a spiritual connection between two separate spirit webs. Basically, if you picture yourself, your identity, your personality as a spider web, the formation of a realmatic bond is like adding another thread between you and another web. All of a sudden, there's a pathway between two individuals, and the stronger that relationship, the wider the pathway becomes. With respect to the AVR, as well as Spren Bonds, because of that connection, now spiritual resources can be shared between these two individuals, between the two spirit webs, for their mutual benefit. Control over natural surges, personified by Spren, is now granted to the Radiant, and the investiture access gained by the AVR now benefits the human. In fact, the AVR probably gains that investiture access... access? Yes. Investiture access. The AVR probably gained that investiture access via their own bond with Paji's worm, making AVR talents a double bond. Now, considering that Sixth of the Dusk is at least several hundred years further in the future than any other Cosmere story we've gotten so far, set during the space opera trilogy of Mistborn Era 4, there's a lot of implications as to the direction things are going if you dig deep enough. For example, theory time. The ones above are not who you think they are. The prevailing theory concerning the ones above, the spacefaring society trying to artificially accelerate the technological advancement on First of the Sun, is that they are from Scadrial. Given the timeline and the level of technology we've seen in Mistborn Era 2, that makes sense. However, there are a couple of other possible candidates. 
Strictly based off of technology, the most advanced for the time period we've seen is actually Taldane. White Sand is the first installment in the Cosmere chronologically, and they already have developed gunpowder and stereo systems. However, because of Autonomy's typical stance of isolationism, and the whole being trapped in the middle of a binary star system, that makes Taldane unlikely. Personally, I think the ones above are actually from Roshar. Now hear me out. Reason number one. Consider the device that Vathi has, that both translates languages and shows a real-time map of AVR locations. Definitely a fabrial. The medallions in Bands of Mourning have to be worn in order to translate, and we haven't seen anything with Ferrukami or Allomancy that would help with cartography. But we have seen a Radiant manipulate connection to translate languages, as well as create a holographic map of the entire continent in Oathbringer. And according to Brandon, you can create fabrials to replicate all surge binding abilities. And finding the AVR? That just sounds like a miniaturized and focused version of the warning fabrial we see with the merchants in Shinovar. And if Rosharans have managed to manufacture perfect gemstones, you've got everlasting batteries. Reason number two, the Rosharans already have virtually everything they would need to build a spacecraft. We've already seen designs for ships to ride on the backs of high storms, which, if comparable to thunderstorms on Earth, can reach over 70,000 feet. That's halfway through the stratosphere. They already have fabrials that can create breezes for breathable air and heat, providing life support. It's possible to create another fabrial for artificial gravity, simply lashing everyone in the same direction. The ship itself can be carved out of wood and then soul cast into metal, with fabrials providing heat sinks for atmospheric reentry. And would you really need any kind of rocket engine if you can just make up your new down? Reason number three. According to a signed copy of the Shadows Beneath writing anthology, Dusk has tried Herdazian food, and he hates it. Considering the fact that the only way on or off world via Shadesmar requires travel through one of the most dangerous places in existence, I doubt that there's been recipe sharing going on. More likely, Herdazian food was introduced to the Elikin by these friendly spacefarers. The ones above have eaten with them, and so if all things must be equal, then they must have shared supplies too. And we know how Dusk feels about the ones above anyway, so of course he wouldn't like their food. Which is a pity, because Shouta is delicious. And reason number four, the ones above have refused to buy, sell, or trade anything with the residents of First of the Sun. Vathi says they have rules, laws they won't explain. Now, if the Knights Radiant are still around to come the Space Age, the oaths of the Radiant piloting these ships would prohibit them from any unethical extortion of these worlds. No other society we've seen would be similarly restricted they wouldn't be able to take advantage of the resources on other planets without those societies being on a level playing field. Journey before destination, if you will. So they'd need to find some way around that. Hence, the machines accidentally left for the Firsters to find, as well as instruction manuals conveniently left with them. The journey still happens, it just gets sped up a bit. Thank you so much for watching this video. Also, big thanks to Botanica Zhu for letting me use some of her gorgeous artwork. Check out more of her stuff in the link in the description. In my next video, we'll finally be heading over to Roshar, where I'll give you a rundown of each of the orders of Night Radiant. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch that as soon as it comes out. There's always more Cosmere to explore, so check out some of my other videos if you're interested. And speaking of Shouta, there's some excellent Cosmere-inspired cuisine recipes online. So I'll post a few of my favorites in the description so you can eat and find out.